I'm going to start out with a couple of stories. Matt, uh, Matt Smith and myself uh, were traveling here and uh, we went on Air Berlin. So we went, we're coming from Salt Lake City, Utah. We flew to Los Angeles and then Los Angeles to Berlin. And in the process of all this happening, Air Berlin went bankrupt or has been going bankrupt and we didn't know. And they lost all of our luggage. So uh, three bags of booth material. So we're, we're sponsored as well with Lingo Tech and uh, both of our bags of clothes. And we keep thinking that they're gonna magically show up, but we're like five days into it and they haven't shown up yet. So uh, anyway, that was quite adventurous, <laughs> so to speak. Um, so we're gonna talk today um, about uh, multilingual inside of Drupal. And we're gonna talk specifically about Drupal 7 today, um, but uh, certainly multilingual in Drupal 8 is, is, a, is better. Um, in most cases, if not all cases, uh, but this just happens to be a client that uh, wasn't migrating over to uh, to eight. Um, but this is, you know, all of this stuff is applicable to both um, because they both function at some level. Um, so, how many folks have uh, multilingual sites that are are you are you thinking of doing them? They already have them, or okay. So, is everyone pretty familiar with how p painful it can be in seven to to get set up? Okay, good. Yeah, that's kind of a loaded question because everyone knows it's kind of hard. Uh, but today we're going to talk about Varian. And has anybody heard about Varian? Do you guys know who Varian is? So Varian's a medical supply company. They do a lot of uh, kind of big x-ray machines for cancer screening and cancer technologies. Um, and obviously in the medical industry, uh, it's important to have your stuff translated and content translated simply because, you know, these machines get uh, kind of sold all around the world. And what's also a nice thing is we were actually a partner too with Acquia, um, and so Acquia does all of their hosting for the site, um, and we did the uh, the translation and the and the translation module from our side. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that and why you know why it's nice to use a translation management system, why it's good to use uh, these kind of third-party systems to help translate content because it makes things a little bit easier. Uh, my name is Calvin Sharps. I am the VP of Marketing at LingoTech. Um, here's how you can get a hold of me on Twitter. Um, LinkedIn and also my uh, Drupal.org handle at the bottom. I'm happy to get uh, any questions or comments. You know, after the after this session, I'm always looking to to have better or more feedback for these types of things. So the agenda today, um, and this and this whole presentation will be about 30 minutes. It's not a full hour, um, and uh, certainly we can ask questions. If you guys want to ask questions in the middle of it, feel free. As a small enough audience here, we can kind of interrupt and and uh, talk about stuff. But we want to talk a little bit of an in introduction here um, about Lingotech. We're going to talk about the varying case study, their challenges, you know, what their business objectives were um, and, and how they were solved, and then the solution um, results and benefits. Um, and again, we can do questions kind of at any time. Now, Lingotech, um, just, and I won't spend too much time on Lingotech because it's, you know, not really appropriate to pitch your company, but you know, we are a, uh, a translation management system. Um, we call ourselves the Translation Network. Um, we were the first cloud-based TMS, uh, meaning that you can access all of your translation files and translation memories, glossaries, terminologies, you know, on demand, um, and they're updated on automatically. Uh, a lot of other providers have stuff that's on-premise and it's hard to share stuff around and keep things up to date and that kind of stuff. Um, we actually have dozens of connectors. Um, so we're, uh, Drupal is one of the, the main ones that we support. We've supported uh, Drupal since 2011 and, and, uh, and six specifically, Drupal 6 um, and 7 and 8. Uh, but we also have connectors into other content management systems like WordPress and Adobe Experience Manager and a variety of other things. And what makes sense to do that is if you can connect all of your content across an organization, you actually save a lot of money uh, reusing those assets. Um, most companies have more than one system. Some may only use Drupal, but a lot of people have like a marketing automation tool called Pardot or Eloqua or Marketo. Or you might be doing all of your support documentation in something like uh, Lithium or Confluence or something like that. Because people typically have a variety of different applications that they're using. So what's good about the system is you're able to kind of support those, uh, all of those across the, the enterprise stack. Um, we have 5,000 in-country professional translation folks. Um, they're in-country because that's the best way to get kind of localization. So if you talk about globalization as I'm going to globalize and then you 
internationalize and then you localize. Those are kind of the three pillars there. And um, as you get into the local level, you really want to use people that are in country that have uh, the colloquial nuances of that area and are able to, um, you know, kind of tell the appropriate tone and story there. Um, we have a, a really robust dev zone. So not only do we have about 30 plus connectors that are commercially available, um, we also have um, uh, about 50 custom modules. Uh, these are people that have their own systems that are kind of hooking into that. Um, and then integration partners like uh, Aquia and other folks. So here's a, a, a nice uh, kind of race car slide of our uh, clients. Um, a lot of these folks um, cross multiple industries. Um, so translation is not uh, kind of a specific, uh, a specific industry, but um, anyway, so uh, a long history of support with the Drupal organization. We are a platinum sponsor. We do, we do corporate sponsorship at Drupal.org. Um, we've got Christian Lopez here is one of the top 30 Drupal um, developers that contributes to the core, um, who's an employee of LingoTech. And we've literally sponsored hundreds of camps and cons. But anyway, enough about that. So again, Mary, uh, Varian is a, uh, a medical supply company, um, and they do uh, uh, large kind of x-ray type machines for uh, cancer screening and that kind of stuff. And so their whole goal is to combat ca cancer and to, to kind of solve um, that uh, large problem. And, you know, this is kind of what you're looking at. It's almost like a, a CAT scan machine. And so uh, you can tell that they would have to have a lot of translation, not only for their web content, but also for all of their uh, product documentation and installation guides and all of that stuff. So we translate a lot of that, all of, all of the stuff that's around that particular uh, client. So one of the biggest challenges we have is um, people have several different departments. Um, and they have, so they have the marketing, the IT cells, they have regulatory compliance, that kind of stuff. And each has its own localization process in most cases. Some, so a lot of these uh, large companies, some have a localization group or department, but a lot actually do it individually. And that's uh, problematic because they're kind of wasting all of their translation spend by not combining or, or doing kind of a one, one uh, across one of the, or all of the thing. So they also have dozens of translation vendors, um, they, have, they struggle to have an integration into Drupal. A lot of uh, people have to end up cutting and pasting stuff out, or they export the PO files and import and re-import. Um, and that can be really taxing and time consuming. Now, that's fine if you have you know, a 100 page site or a couple hundred page sites, but if you have thousands of web pages, it's really uh, you know, problematic to keep track of all of that stuff. So you also have code areas between uh, when you're pushing stuff back and forth. And um, you know, some of the vendors have uh, poor UI support. Also, still too many manual processes in that. We'll go through the processes here in just a minute. So the business objectives for Varian was to increase the speed and delivery of their translated content. And what they wanted to do is they wanted to standardize across all of their departments. So they wanted to have it all kind of under one umbrella as opposed to multiple departments doing things. And they also wanted to have uh, you know, a translation management system that was easy to use, it had a nice UI, it's, um, a lot of folks have, uh, uh, you know, challenging things, you know, processes are difficult to do, and so how do you make those things easier? Um, you want to have an effective management of translation memories. Um, translation memories, if you don't know, are previously translated content, so I translate from English to German. Uh, the translation memory is the storage of that, of that translation, um, and so you have different language pairs that you're storing for each of the translations. Um, what's nice is if you have the translation memories, when you go to retranslate something, you don't have to translate the whole entire piece again. So if you're on a web page and you want to retranslate one paragraph, you can send the translation up and it will keep tr the system will keep track of the differences and you only have to retranslate the one paragraph or one word or a variety of things. You can also store glossaries and terminologies inside. And a terminology is I'm going to you know, have a specific name for a specific item. Um, and we can enforce those types of things too. So that's always used the same across all of the properties or all of the web pages, that kind of stuff. And so it's nice to be able to have the ability to, you know, control your brand and, and SEO keywords and that kind of stuff through the glossaries and this whatnot. But terminologies are really important. Um, that's where you start to s see some real cost savings over time. And if you can share those across multiple departments, um, it becomes even better because 
they're each reusing that content. So if you can do this in a cloud-based environment, it actually is live. So if there's a change made from one system, the other system can actually use that, uh, that new change and, and automatically publish it out. Um, we also have a really nice integration into the, uh, in, of, the, of our translation management system into Drupal 7 and 8, which allows you to you know, import and extract content really easily. There's a really nice dashboard that keeps track of it. Um, it'll also allow you to, if you're using stuff like the meta tag module, it'll actually allow you to, to translate all of the page titles and, and uh, meta descriptions and all those types of things. Um, Sitemap XML, if you're using that, you can translate that. So those are really important tools for uh, SEO and SEM. So what you're doing is really reducing this kind of manual process of, of uh, keeping track of that. So if you think about a page and how it's drawn out on the screen and you actually look at the code, there's a bunch of stuff behind it that makes that page look like it looks. And there's a lot of kind of hidden code with those alt tags and metadata and stuff. So those do need to be translated for uh, SEO and SEM purposes. So it's important that uh, you have a system that's able to extract not only the content out of the blocks and the panels and the taxonomies, but also that metadata as well. So, um, you know, Aqua is a great partner of ours and the solution with, uh, with us and Drupal for Varian was uh, their, uh, Aqua does the hosting of the, of the site um, and we do all the translation and, and we use Drupal. It's kind of the, the glue between those two. So let's talk a little bit, a little about the LingoTech inside Drupal 7 module. Um, so we have kind of a multilingual API first approach, which allows us to have these different content repositories all connect together. And so whether it's a website, code repository, um, you know, e-commerce, software UIs, all of these different things, what you want to do is you want to connect those or have those have a connecting point and reuse all of those uh, assets. Um, and that makes it super easier if you're using kind of a standard system. So this is an idea of like the different connectors that we connect with, of course Drupal being one of the primary ones. And of course when you're using Drupal 7, you do have to have a set of core modules to actually make it multilingual. So Drupal 7 by nature out of the box or out of you know, a, a generic install does not have multilingual support. Um, so there is a variety of different modules like locale and entity translation and the variables and these other ones that you have to install um, to actually get Drupal 7 to work. Now Drupal 8 has all of these built into core and so it makes it a little bit easier. You don't have to keep these modules up to date and keep track of them and all of that stuff. But one thing I do tell people is if you do want to get a multilingual site up and running, you can actually run our install and it'll install all of these automatically. So we run through a script. So if you drush, drush a, the command, the R module will install all of these dependencies and it actually makes it really easy to, to set up a site. Even if you don't use LingoTech, you can turn it off or you know, get rid of it. It just helps to get it set up because of that script is, is super easy. So I tell people even if you don't use LingoTech, if you're setting up a multilingual site, this can save literally like a day's worth of work getting all of these modules installed in the right order and all of the stuff kind of turned on in them. So that's a nice kind of bonus there. Um, we'd be glad if you did try us out, but if, if not, at least you can save some time and some, some uh, energy there. So at LingoTech, we, we talk about the, the integration of technology, the integration itself and the translation. Um, so you've got this technology uh, stack, these all these different connectors. Um, you're going to have the integration of the API that sends it to and from, and then you have the translation workflows. In the translation workflows, you can do a variety of different workflows of, of content. So we do support machine translation of about 10 different machine translation engines. Um, you can use different ones, mix and match them based on the languages, language pairs. Some are paid, some are free, like Google and, and uh, Microsoft. But we can help you figure out which is the best machine translation engine to use. Um, we also support what's called community or crowdsource translation, and that can be loosely termed as even people in your organization that are going to help translate. So you might have partners or different folks in your ecosystem that will help translate. In some cases, you might have a support group that will help translate. Um, and then we can also support professional translation or a combination of all three of those. So some people will run through professional translation, or excuse me, machine translation. They'll have an in-country person that works for them do the translation and then they'll have us do a review or vice versa in some cases. So super flexible workflows and those are easy to set up in kind of a drag and drop environment and people use different workflows for different languages and different language pairs and different content types. And so if you have a blog and you're gonna have comments, maybe you just run machine translation on the comments and it's fine because it's not 
super important content. If it's not completely accurate, it's, it's okay to, to have it show up. Or you can have kind of you know, a higher level of, of participation in the, the translation itself. So let's talk about how it happens kind of in the past. Um, you know, projects become super complicated and they take, in some cases, four to six weeks. And you can see all these, these different steps that you have to go through from quoting to copying and pasting. And, and so we have this, so what we do is we eliminate a lot of these steps using the translation, uh, our translation module and our TMS. And so what we're eliminating is a lot of project management and web dev or webmaster time as opposed to the actual translator's time. So, you know, kind of early on when we came out, people were like, oh, you're getting rid of translator's jobs, and that's not actually the case. The translators, in most cases, still do the translation for professional services. What you're eliminating is all of this kind of mundane and routine task of, of doing things. So if you look at a project manager and a web admin, these different steps get eliminated by different parts of the system. And so a project manager might have to identify content, create the new pages, edit the pages. They might have to email, FTP stuff around, whatnot. But what you can do is, and, and the translation process right here is really a lot of what the only thing that the, a translation service provider, an LSP, provides is they, they do the translation. So you do all of the project management, wrap all the files, you send it to them, and then they, you know, via email or FTP or some method. And then when it's done, they'll send that back. And so what the inside uh, application with, uh, with Drupal is it eliminates all of these steps or automates them. So kind of think of it as you're keeping track of all of your pages in a spreadsheet. And it's really a glorified spreadsheet that allows you to see where everything is translated, what state and stage it's in, if it's in sync, out of sync, out of date, without having to manually do that. It just automatically tracks that. So I'm on a page, I make a change to the page, it'll flag it as being changed, and then you can have it automatically sent up, or you can manually send it up, or do a combination of those, and it'll just do the translation process, right? All of that stuff happens with the translation workflow. Now, what happens inside of our, our translation management system are these other steps, so manually downloading the files, exporting the POs or non-friendly entity types, and, and sending those up to our system. And what happens is the translation process can then happen with the translators. Um, we do support our own translators. We also support other translation vendors as well in our system. Um, we have lots of clients that have multiple vendors that they use. So they might use Lingotech for part of their translation services, but they have three or four other vendors or they have a review vendor. We have software and support for all of that. So um, you're not tied to us specifically if you don't want to use our professional translators and you want to use someone else, but you can then use the system to get all of these kind of benefits. So what happens is what we want to do is eliminate all of these steps or make them a lot fewer or you know, automate as much as possible. So again, what we're doing is we're getting rid of all of the, the web admin stuff and the project manager stuff. And in most cases, that stuff is really mundane, routine, um, it's challenging, it's hard to keep things in sync. If you have a site with 24 different languages and you, you add 10 pages a month to it, you know, you're really adding 240 pages or you have changes. It's really difficult to keep track of all of that. And so this is kind of a, a, a fun animation that shows how content is pushed into the system and then published back. It's also the fact that we have continuous publishing model now, too. It used to be that stuff was kind of brochure sites and just static. And so how do you do a static site or how do you do something that's dynamic? So stuff's changing all the time. You know, pages are dynamically driven. Um, they're no longer static. So Think about your page, if someone logs in and you have taxonomies built around those folks and you're displaying different content based on the taxonomies, how do you translate all of that content? Um, some other solutions are proxy solutions and, and proxy is really just an exact duplicate of a site and it's difficult to have any kind of customization or login information and security you know, on a proxy situation. So Lingotech's theory is you don't use a proxy server, you actually use Drupal for what Drupal's meant to do, because you can have the login, the security, all of the different taxonomies and that stuff, and the content is stored locally in Drupal. It's just pushed up to Lingotech to do the translation part of it, and then when it's done, it's, it's pushed back in and you're using you know, your existing asset there to serve it up and serve that content up. So the results are, um, and I needed to update this because they, well, they actually translated into uh, uh, five different websites. So they had more than one website, and that's pretty common for a lot of large organizations and enterprises. Um, so they had five different websites that they translated. They actually translated, they just added a new one since I've added this. So they were up to 12, um, 12 languages, and they were able to do all of this in, in three months. 
um, from start to finish on all of those things. And that was a big deal for them because in the previous time it had taken them, you know, probably three times as long, it was almost a year for that project. So they were amazed at how quickly they were able to get stuff in and out and actually get stuff up and running. So here's an example kind of of the site, um, and it's interesting just to see, uh, you know, Drupal does a great job of displaying, you know, different types of languages, right to left, left to right, and uh, certainly with, um, you know, uh, in this case, it's a, a Japanese site. Um, but you can see how uh, elegant it looks, you know, even in a different language, and so they're able to control that and, and do a lot of, of stuff. What was interesting with Varian, too, is they were able to actually machine translate their entire site first, um, and they looked at it to see what it looked like, right? So you can get machine translation really quickly, you know, a matter of minutes to get something translated and back. And then they can go into the site itself um, and then see if there's things that are broken or if they were missing tags or something's not wrapped in a T function. You know, if one of the modules is broken and doesn't, you know, support translation, um, that's another key thing you have to be careful with is a lot of, you know, third party modules aren't multilingual ready, so you have to be a little bit, um, a little bit wary and, and, and kind of keep track of that. Um, here's some of the other sites. Um, so you can see that it turned out really great. They've done a great job um, with the UI, the interface. Um, notice how they do use different pictures and different colors and different languages. That's always you know, pretty suggested that you have you know, kind of local specific colors and local specific images um, when you're doing translation. I have a whole other kind of translation 101 uh, uh, webinar that I do that talks about those things specifically, um, how you have to be careful about how you translate stuff. And it's fun to travel to another country and see the, the English version of translations um, on things. And, and in some cases, they don't make sense because um, they're either backwards or you, know, you can tell the translation or the translation person maybe wasn't native uh, English speaker. And so it's fun to see some of those. Um, even when we were in the airport, there were some kind of funny ones up on the signs and that kind of stuff. But what you really want to make sure is you have you know, a good localization person that's looking at that stuff and reviewing it and making sure that it's accurate. Um, here's kind of a subset or sub page of that. You can see the, you know, their kind of MRI machine. Um, and in some cases, like you can see this intensity modulated radiotherapy, they actually do have certain trademark things that are, are uh, only in English, no matter what language they are, or their certain way. So Halcyon and then these things are actually always spelled out that way. That's controlled in those uh, glossaries and terminology. So if you're looking for a, a translation management system, you want to make sure that those are supported and how you can push those types of things around. All right, so benefits. Um, between Acquia, uh, LingoTech, and uh, Drupal, uh, we were able to give a, a seamless you know, Drupal integration. Uh, you can see the UI looked really good, the UI for uh, getting stuff in and out. Uh, faster translation times by almost uh, you know, two-thirds of the amount of time that it took them traditionally or in the past to do that stuff. Um, they had the centralized management and control of their uh, glossaries and terminologies, leveraged uh, TMs, and then it's just complete reduction in manual processes. So what are these benefits of the integration? Seamless processing, a, a single solution that can create, store, track, and manage multilingual content. Um, they are also rolling out into their marketing automation tool and some other tools as well. Um, what's nice for them too is they actually don't ever have to leave their Drupal environment for a lot of their content creators, so they don't have to log into another system, a TMS, to do that. Content is all managed and pushed in and out of that area. Um, and then this, uh, build the site end to end in three months. So be benefits of a better UI, in intuitive user interface, um, easy onboarding of LSP. So a lot of times you have to get uh, you know, a lot of folks um, up and running on different systems and you know, being able to support something that has a friendly user interface, good CX and UX, uh, is super important so folks can, can ramp up quickly. You don't have to have a long, long term of someone figuring out how to get something to work. Um, which, of course, reduces the need for training personnel and reduce on, on the manual processes. So the benefits of faster translation, they get faster delivery of localized content. Um, again, they went into 12 different languages. Um, faster entry into global markets, um, which is really important. Um, it's interesting if you're, if you're launching a site and you can actually go two or three times faster, how, how do you start recognizing revenue earlier? So if it would traditionally take me nine months to go to another language, and I've now gone to it in three months, I start selling those products you know, six months earlier, 
how much quicker do I start making money on those products or kind of ramped up to, to sell those things. That's really important in a competitive marketplace, like how quickly can you get up to market, continuous translations, speed to market, all these different things are, are really important. Um, you can sell more, earn more quickly, um, and you can enter ahead of the competition and um, obviously increase the brand presence, so it makes it a lot easier. Um, again, you can also share assets across these different systems. So benefits of, uh, of a centralized system is reduced separate departments working in silos. You know, we had that silo doc or silo picture up earlier. Um, consistent global messaging is becoming really, really important, especially with these large uh, companies that want to have a global brand presence across all of their properties. And you can always use like Apple as an example or Amazon as an example. You know, you, when you're dealing with those folks, you always know you're dealing with those folks because everything looks the same, feels the same same language, uh, same pictures, that kind of stuff. And so uh, using a, a centralized system helps to manage that um, and keep track of all of those assets. Um, you can add added security by assigning permissions and authorizations. Um, our system actually goes to the granular stuff, so a project manager can't see other projects, other vendors can't see other documents and that kind of stuff. So you can keep track of who has access to your content at any given time. Um, which is really important, you know, in, in a lot of cases. If you're in the financial or medical industry, you have to have, uh, a, you know, kind of a layer of security for who can actually see the data, or you don't want the data to get out earlier into the marketplace than, uh, you know, a leak of that kind of, of sort. So, you know, being able to control, you know, the documents, the, the downloads, all that kind of stuff is, is useful for a lot of different companies. Um, also, again, we mentioned leveraging translation memories is important as well. So. Benefits of leveraging TM, I mentioned this just a little bit earlier, but um, various teams have access to multiple uh, translation memory vaults and glossaries. Um, if a change gets changed, it immediately happens, everyone else that's using the system actually has access to that as soon as the, the save button is hit. Offline systems, um, you know, if someone's using a translation memory on their desktop with uh, a CAT tool, uh, a computer-aided translation tool, um, and they make a change to the translation memory, those memories don't get automatically updated. Those have to get sent back in. They have to be re-merged together and then displayed. And so you can see the benefits is if you're, if you're translating stuff um, by using that system, it's just a lot more efficient. Um, you can also have two people in the document at the same time. So if you have a, a translator and a reviewer, that's how we get the speed and the time a lot of times is you can get a quarter of the way into the document um, and then you can tell the workflow to, to fire off and tell the translator to start translate, or the reviewer to start translating after the translator's done, and they can actually work in parallel at the same time in the same document. Um, and so, you know, most translators can translate about 200, uh, 2,500 words a day, so you can kind of start doing some math if you have so many pages, like how many translators are, is it going to take? But if you can actually have them working parallel or in tandem to some degree, that actually saves the time that you're going out there, so you can actually have multiple people working on the same document. So use of TM leverage for faster cost-effective translation. Um, the cloud TMS ensures that the TM is not stored in silos. Again, most of the stuff uh, gets FTP'd and emailed around. Um, it'll be sent to a translator on their desktop, um, and it'll send them all of the translation memories, it'll send them all of the documents, all of the, the files to translate, and then when they're done, they'll email it back or FTP it back. And it's just not very efficient to, to work um, and, and keep all of that stuff kind of in real time. Um, with the cloud, TMS ensures that the TM is centrally stored so it's immediately accessible and it's always up to date for other translators. So you want to make sure that the system that you're using will allow you to, 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 to do those types of things. That's what's the benefit of a cloud, a cloud TMS ensures. So benefits of reducing manual processes. So if you remember my chart, all of those little boxes and different steps that you had to do across there. Uh, we can automate the creation of the new translation projects um, so they, you know, so they didn't have to have a, a start from scratch. Um, we actually have the ability to now to do dynamic workflow, um, which means you can tag stuff and then based on the set of tags, it'll come into the system, it'll actually create a workflow on its own. Um, we, have, we have an artificial intelligence layer that actually will then determine how quickly it goes through, what the workflow is, who gets assigned to it based on a bunch of tags, um, unli unlimited tag types of things, which becomes really interesting because then you don't have to create a new workflow for each, uh, for each system, so to speak, or for each new document. Those could be kind of created on the scratch. Um, drag and drop workflows makes it easier. Um, added visibility to the project status, you know, reduces calls and emails. 
So think of yourself as a project manager for a translation project. If you've sent a, a, a document to a translator, they're not responding to you, you have to email them, call them, where's the document, when are you gonna be done? If it's all cloud-based uh, TMS, then they're you know, able to see where those are in those processes. And if someone's not responding, they can reassign it automatically to somebody else. They get notified and they start working on it. So you can start to see how a lot of these efficiencies um, by using this system um, will make things go quicker and less expensive. So the next steps for Varian is they're gonna add additional languages. Um, they're also integrating more robust workflows for each of their departments um, so that they all meet their specific needs. Um, we have an inside Salesforce connector. Um, a lot of people use Salesforce for document management, for sending to their sales uh, to, to customers. Um, they also have a knowledge base product that we connect into, so they're looking to do both of those. And um, what their ultimate goal is to have a single source for their translation management. So they want to make sure everything's kind of wrapped into to one system. So um, we do have in our booth, uh, uh, we just produced an ebook, which is Drupal 7 versus Drupal 8, and we had a, a, a fun motif here with Batman versus Superman and that whole thing going on, and which one you should use. Um, if you want to stop by the booth, you can pick up a copy of that, um, and it gives explanations of how both have you know good things and bad things, but what ultimately the winner is, you know, we should probably start moving to uh, to Drupal 8. Now, in our downloads and all of our things, it's interesting because uh, Drupal 8 will have been out two years in November, and we're just starting to cross the threshold of, of sites using 7 and 8. So if you look at the graph, you know, 7 starting to reduce and 8 starting to do, and there's a, there's a tipping point where we'll start to see more Drupal 8 than Drupal 7. Um, and we predict that kind of by the end of the year. So it's an interesting kind of milestone to see as one product starts to sunset and the other one's still taking off to see that inflection point. Um, and a lot of people kind of don't want to be the, the guinea pigs on going to eight, but when you get that inflection point, it's probably mature enough and robust enough that you can you know, safely move over there. Um, obviously, some people don't have uh, Drupal 8 modules for modules that you might be using on your site, and so you have to take that into consideration. But in some cases, there's something else that's there, or maybe better, um, and so you can kind of go into that as well. And that's it. I don't know if that was answered anybody's questions. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me right now. And yes, it is fine. No, you're fine. I can hear you. I think these are recorded. So. Oh, okay, then yeah. yeah. Well, whatever. Uh, first of all, I have to ask: Did I understand correctly that you are wearing the same clothes for the fifth day in a row? Not <laughs> not correct. Okay. I've been shopping. I've been shopping at H and M. <laughs> I bought two days worth of clothes, and Matt and I are going a little bit later today to get the next three days of clothes. Okay. We good, kept expecting the you, bags yeah. to show up. Okay. Yeah. But I appreciate the concern. Yeah, yeah, I don't really feel for you. And of course, as Murphy's Law has it, you probably get them on the last day when you're here. I actually, right now, I don't want to because I don't want to take five yeah, bags. Yeah, it's easier. Home. Yeah. I'd like to take my clothes back, but I don't want to take <laughs> that other stuff back. Yeah, the booth stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So um, my name is Kalle Rosti, and I work for a company called Connect Cranes, and we're running our sites in Drupal 7. Yep. We have uh, 56 sites in 33 languages. Yep. And we have uh, Lingotech TMS in use. And just from my personal experience, just a few comments. I think for us at least, uh, one challenge with Lingotech has been, or doesn't, it's not specific to Lingotech, but any uh, system that's kind of integrated into mm -hmm. the system is is because um, we have this phase of local review, so our local marketing goes through the content yep. and uh, reviews and approves. Uh, so kind of getting them to abandon their old bad habits is kind of the biggest challenge because gotcha. uh, they 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 have difficulties in kind of adapting to a new process and the new tool. Sure. Um, so they like to go back to, you know, can you pull this content uh, out from the website to a Word document and then I'll do the fixes. And in worst case, uh, they'll go to the CMS and do the changes, mm -hmm. but there's no track of that, those changes anywhere. So when the se next translation comes in, they, they'll have the same issues. So it's really not beneficial for every, anyone. But So we do, have a, we do have a solution for that. Well, you can actually, and, and this is a, a really recent addition, I think it's been in the last maybe two months or three months, and I'm not sure if you know, but you can actually, once something's loaded into the system, you can actually export it as, I think it's a T kit. Mm -hmm. They can work it off online, and then they can re-import it, and we keep track of all of the changes from, from the T kit. Now, we don't necessarily cool. recommend that, um, but we have a lot of big clients that are like, our translators refuse to use your workbench, because it's different. I'm used to using SDL, you know, Trados, whatever, 
and so they want to continue to use that. We're not going to force folks into doing that. The company is yourself wants to keep track of all of that. You want to reuse the mm -hmm. translation memories and, and those types of things. So what I would suggest is we could certainly either demo that for you or you know get you set up to use that. That's not even an additional charge, but it's it's a new feature. Mm -hmm. um, so if you don't know about that, we can talk about that. Yeah. Then nice. someone can like pull it out and do what they want to do with it. You don't get the benefits of real-time updates and all of that stuff, but you do have the ability to have them use it. And when you upload it back into the system, we then do keep track of the differences there. Oh, sorry, there. So you don't have to worry about losing those memories or re-importing those memories by scratch. Yeah, that will be good because that's one yep. of the kind of bigger concrete challenges there that yep. that you do changes and and uh, and you kind of fix it once and then when the translators come in, they have the same issues. So it's kind of frustrating for for everyone. So we should look at that with you. I think that would probably be the answer for that, um, as opposed to like trying to force them into training a new a new cat tool. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I think it's better if you do, if you can. But you know, if they're not going to do it, they're not going to do it. So yeah. um, there is a there is a solution for that. Yeah, yeah. I actually have a meeting with Kent Bridges later today. I don't. Okay. I don't yep. He's here. No. Um, so we are also now migrating from Drupal seven to Drupal eight, and mm -hmm. you mentioned the book. So I'll I'll try and get a copy of yeah. for myself, but. Are there any tips, kind of, what we should be on the lookout for when we start migrating, or, you know, anything to, you know, take into account? And also, what do you think are the kind of main improvements from seven to eight when it comes to the Lingotec TMS? Yeah. So the TMS itself, you know, hasn't changed because of seven versus eight. It's really the installation and the general theory of how eight handles locale or internationalization. So in seven, it was an afterthought, and everyone had to create all of these modules. All of those modules, you saw that the mm -hmm. circle with those, have to be update, updated. They're maintained by different people. They're not part of the core. Um, as those have been moved into the core, now the core contributors are, are looking at it. So in our perspective, it's actually better. People are like, oh, is eight going to eliminate Lingotech? And you still have to translate the content. Mm -hmm. You have to think about seven and eight and the multilingual around that, like the plumbing that actually makes the site multilingual, mm -hmm. right? So in seven, you had to bolt on all of these things to make a multilingual. Eight out of the box has all of that built in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, think of it as a race car where you've had to add, you know, a car where you've had to add, you know, windows that roll up and down, but now you have a car, when you buy it off the gate, it already has it, you know, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. But if you have specific questions, I've got Matt back here and, and Christian. So Christian is a core contributor to Drupal 8. Mm -hmm. He was part of the Drupal 8 initiative. You know, we mentioned earlier that he was one of the top 30 folks that are in that you know, kind of elite group of, of people. Um, Lingotech believes in giving back to Drupal. It's, it's our best module. We sell a lot of it. And um, you know, we, 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 are, we expect ourselves to contribute to the core you know, to help maintain it because mm -hmm. we're benefiting from that. And so, you know, we're proud of the fact. But those are the two guys to ask specific okay. questions on that. And we're happy to set up some time, you know, to do that. But um, between Matt, he's a director of integrations, and, and Christian, who's the guy that programmed core, par parts of the core and our module, those are, you know, the specific questions. Now, when you migrate stuff, if everything's in the TMS already and you have all your translation memories, when you push those back down into eight, um, all of that stuff should match up as long as you haven't changed the content. Now, if it's changed, you might have to just do the differences, but the translation memories will keep track of all of that. And so, and by cha change, you mean during that migration process? Yeah. 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 So if you migrate, if you were to just migrate the English site, you could then rematch it up to all of your mm -hmm. translation memories. If the content hasn't changed in that, it should match up and just work. Okay. That's another beautiful thing about doing it is you can. You kind of force a migration with all your translated content by using the TMS as a rest stop for the content Why in the migration process. Okay. If that makes sense. Yep. All right. Cool. Thanks. Hey, thanks. Good questions. Any more? You look like you have a question. <laughs> you just have a nice smile. You're like, it looks like you're ready to say something. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and I and I don't mean to dish too much on seven because, in all honesty, seven is is as difficult as seven might seem in some cases. We deal with a lot of different translation or a lot of different content management systems, and Drupal seven is actually better than most. 
um, not to dish other, my other modules, but you know, WordPress is exactly the same way. WordPress is not multilingual out of the box. You have to use a third party application to make it multilingual as well, um, which is just crazy because you know, WordPress is one of the you know, most used sites in the world or CMSs in the world. So having it be kind of a secondary thing for them is interesting that they don't take it completely serious. Um, SharePoint is horrible. <laughs> Um, it's really, really challenging to get, and, uh, SharePoint's idea of, mul of multilingual is to do multi-sites, and so you don't have one core code base, you spin up 11 sites, and so think of the infrastructure and the cost about that, the licensing, I think it's for them, might be a licensing issue. Um, you can do it, but it's, it's challenging and you have to kind of do these kind of workarounds, where even seven out of the box, once you get all those core modules installed, actually functions really well. Um, and so I would even, you know, put seven against a lot of other content management systems in terms of, of the ability to do the, the plumbing piece of it, so to speak. Um, but certainly eight's a lot better just because it's, you don't have to rely on all these other things. Eight's interesting too because in seven it assumes everybody's English and it starts with an English site and then you basically spin up other sites. When you first log into eight, it asks you what your base language is and it goes and gets all of the language packs and files for that's so all of your, you know, admin interface, all that stuff is, is translated. People don't have to retranslate it. They don't have to go grab it. It goes grabs it automatically. Um, and so, if you want to, you know, spin up a German site, it asks you what, you know, you say I'm German, and it, the base language is German, as opposed to the base language is English, and then I'm going to add German. And so that's really nice. That's a that's a key fundamental shift for eight that I think is important. Is they're thinking about multilingual as the first step. Like, what language are you? What language are you? Let's start from there, as opposed to English and let's, let's copy a site over or that was files. I said that correctly, right, Christian? <laughs> I have the guy that did it, so I, if I don't say it right, he'll give me a hard time. Any other questions? All right, well, I appreciate everybody's time. Thanks for coming.